Welcome back. In the United States, things are getting ugly between Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump and his Democratic counterpart Joe Biden. The two traded a flurry of insults at the first presidential debate ahead of the November election. Biden threw the first punch, telling Trump to shut up. Not only to not want to hold back, Trump repeatedly interrupted Biden. At times, the debate split screen showed the two candidates trying to talk over each other. Are you willing to tell the American people tonight whether or not you will support either ending the filibuster or packing the court? Whatever position I take on that, that'll become the issue. The issue is the American people should speak. You should go out and vote. You're in voting now. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Court? Let Vote now. Are you going to pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that because question? Because the you question is, the question Supreme is, Court justice, the radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, on, man. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? Right. Gentlemen, is, I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. We have end, no, no, not going to give a list. We have ended this segment. We're going to move on to the second segment. That was really a pr productive segment, wasn't it? <laughs> Keep yapping, man. The people understand, Joe. <laughs> they 47 do. years, you've Je done nothing. All right, let's get analysis on it then. Uh, let's talk to a uh, professor in political sciences, Professor Dirk Gotze, uh, to unpack it also. Prof, I believe you've also been watching uh, the presidential debate in the United States. What are your impressions? Well, very much as you introduced it, there was lots of uh, infighting. There was lots of accusations. There was lots of personal attacks that were made uh, by both uh, candidates. Obviously, a, a little bit more, I would say, by President Trump. Um, but it wasn't a one-sided event, uh, and it, it, it really was an indication, in my view, of how divided the campaigns are, um, how divided the two uh, candidates are, and how divided the population in general uh, and the electoral uh, are. And I think that that is really the significance, I would say, of this first uh, grant of debates. Yeah, I mean, so I suppose because it happened in the early morning hours and it was a massive uh, television debate, people of a certain age could perhaps compare it to, um, you know, sporting metaphors, rumble in the jungle, perhaps this was the rumble in Ohio. But do you believe that the American people are any wiser as to who would make a better president? In, in, in other words, the issues that had been outlined before the debate, issues such as health care, race relations in America, uh, and the records of the two candidates uh, that, are, that were on the stage, um, do you believe the American people are any wiser as to who would make a better president on those issues? No, I, I don't believe that. I, I think this this was the failure of this debate, is that they didn't go into the main, the substantive issues that they are standing for. And I, I think some would say, well, there are not so many substantive issues. It's more about personalities, uh, this campaign. It's more about where they stand, how they try to uh, relate to the public, how they deal with the pandemic in the U.S., and not so much about policy matters. It, it was, although there was, uh, you referred to the discussion about the health issues, there was some form of exchange between what was Obamacare uh, versus President Trump, who was saying, well, Obamacare, he wanted to get rid of it as soon as possible. Uh, Biden was saying, but what is your alternative? But it didn't provide answers. And I think that is the, the lack of clarity um, is possibly the main outcome of, of this debate. Uh, if it was someone from the outside who's not part of the American public um, and who listened only to this uh, debate, I think that person would say, well, I don't know how to vote. So there's always an assessment at the end of these to say who won it, um, who won it for you, Prof, uh, and why? I think the person who lost it is President Trump. I'm not sure that uh, Joe Biden won it because in some cases he was also tentative with his responses. He was also in some cases not putting forward as clearly as it should and sometimes in a very long-winded way uh, what these positions were. And I thought he should have done it much in a much clearer way than what he did it in the end. But uh, President Trump, the fact that he intervened so much that he was seen as, as not giving an opportunity to Joe Biden I think for many people that was a, a way of indicating uh, his intolerance uh, in a political sense. So you mentioned earlier on that the issue of personalities coming to the fore uh, was quite visible in this debate. Do you believe that 
I suspect, let me put it to you that way, I suspect that that was part of the prep that went uh, into prepping Joe Biden to say that, look, when you're debating this man, his personality will be, you know, on full display on that stage and basically might end up dominating. And I suppose lessons from the debate with Hillary Clinton uh, in 2016. Uh, do you believe that that was a wise move on the part of Joe Biden um, to basically match, match uh, Donald Trump toe-to-toe -to -toe in as far as showing off his personality and also um, not, not, not pulling back in as far as going on the offensive? I think that was the plan or that was the strategy. I think part of the plan was to say that I, I'm not intimidated by Donald Trump. Uh, because many people believe he's in a sense weak, he's too old, he's too weak, he, he cannot stand to play, uh, fulfill this role as, as president of the country. Um, and then at the same time, we also wanted to show, to demonstrate that uh, Donald Trump cannot intimidate him. And that is indeed what President Trump tried to do with all the interruptions and, and also telling him, for example, that he's not smart. He was last in his class. You know? So it became very personal. And the fact that, that Joe Biden didn't sort of uh, buckled down and, and uh, was influenced, negatively influenced by that, I think that was a good sign from his point of view. But as I said, I think in the process, he missed opportunities in order to explain what he's standing for, because the, it is not a normal campaigning process. These campaigning methods are more confined to online um, uh, speeches, while President Trump is, is going for the big rallies. So uh, it, he has some disadvantage in that respect. All right, thank you for your insights there, Professor Dirk Kotze, uh, who is professor in political sciences there, weighing in on the debate that happened in the United States.